All right, so in today's video, we are going to try and further modify a shit speaker and find some more speakers to play with at the second hand store. So let's go get in my car and head down there and let's see what we can find. Also, one last thing is while I'm out and about, I will be filming on my phone and leaving my big camera here just because I don't want to carry this thing around. So I apologize for the quality loss. Also, I posted on Instagram that I did rear muffler delete. So let's hear how that sounds. So like I said before, I probably won't be able to film too much while I'm in there, but I'll try my hardest to film what I can. Alright, so here we are with the haul. I've got a US Audio center channel, a pair of Pioneer speakers. They have sort of an 8-inch woofer. These cheapy little Philips woofers here. And I'll elaborate when I get home why I've picked this one, but it has a bright blue woofer. And then some knockoff Bose speakers here called Doze, and we'll take a look at those when I get home as well. All right, so in today's video, I have more cheap, nasty speakers that I'm gonna be taking a look at with you guys, and we're gonna have a quick look through them, we're gonna test them, and then we're gonna see what the overall outcome is gonna be for the speakers, whether or not they get blown up, or if I use them for some other sort of purpose. So let's quickly go over what I've got right here. First things first, we'll zoom you nice in. We have a DOS speaker or DOS. I believe it's probably gonna be pronounced DOS because this is a replica speaker of a Bose speaker. As we can see, it swivels like so. We pull the grills off and we're, we reveal a very, very cheap little two inch driver in there. So these are the first little speakers here that I've managed to pick up. And I have three of these things actually, surprisingly. And uh, yeah, I don't exactly know how they are going to plug into anything I have. If we have a look here, we've got like this sort of RCA looking thing and then we have this sort of screw. I, I just don't know how this works. So I'm going to have to figure that out myself. But that is the first speaker I picked up, the DOS or DOS little sound cube things that twist around and oh, I feel they feel like they've got a bit of added weight to them. So we'll have to have a look inside and we'll see what's that and how that is as we always do. Second contestant is this right here, a Philips speaker. Again, well, we've seen all these in the back of my car, but this speaker here I've picked because if we have a close look down here at the woofer, it is indeed bright blue and I just really wanted to have that driver to myself and I'm just probably gonna pull it out and I might find a use later down the road, but why would you pass up the opportunity for a bright, bright blue speaker it's it's rather different and that's why i picked these up uh as well as that i've picked up this again i've shown you all this in the back of my car but i'm going to go over it one more time us audio center channel now this is probably the pick of the bunch i just realized that you can see the other speakers in the back there but this is probably the pick of the bunch uh it is the heaviest it is probably the most high quality speaker of the lot too so let's just quickly pull the grill off as we can see right here we are greeted with some nice looking drivers and a tweeter in the middle. These are very solid feeling. We have a nice pointy dust cap, some nice uh, in good condition rubber surrounds and a nice looking tweeter. I might use this tweeter to replace the tweeter in the uh, shit speaker, so to call it. And uh, because that tweeter has been leaking from behind and I just want to upgrade that thing and I just want to put more speakers in the shit speaker. So we'll see how we go with that and how that decides to work out. So we've got this one as well. And then again, lucky last is these giant Pioneer speakers. Now, I believe these have uh, an eight inch driver. They've got what is, it says there are three ways. So they've probably got like a, a super tweeter or something up here. Then they've got just a normal paper dome tweeter and then a eight inch woofer down the bottom here. I don't have the grill for it, unfortunately, uh, in case these are actually nice. I don't know what I'll use these for if they are nice, but the actual box design just feels a little bit too cheap for my taste. So it's probably not the greatest speaker, although it says made in Japan on the back, the box design just sort of hints towards maybe on the lower quality side of things, but we'll have to see how that goes. So should we pull them apart 
or should we listen to them first? Let's quickly, before I uh, pull them apart, let's sort of listen to them. I don't know how I'm gonna hook the DOS one up. I assume, uh, I don't know, I'll have to figure this out. I've got a little amp here, it's my little kicker amp, as we will remember from plenty of previous videos. I've used this little amp before. And what I'm gonna try and do, I think it's probably the bottom terminal here, is I'm gonna stick this little black wire in the middle of it, and then I'm gonna touch the red wire to, yeah, red wire to the side there. That's exactly how this works. And it sounds absolutely terrible. So we have two two inch full range drivers and it provides very little treble and uh, the actual bass sounds a little bit muddy and boomy. We'll have a look inside. We'll see what the back of these drivers are like. We'll see if they actually have nice size magnets or if there's just added weights inside, which is what I believe would be to be the case with some knockoff Bose speakers. Now let's look at the Philips speakers right here. I think I'm gonna try this one because I can see the wires already unraveled right here. Now we have two wires for this, so I'm gonna assume uh, the blue one is going to be for the woofer and the red one is going to be for the tweeter. So we're gonna just quickly touch this here with my wires that I've already spliced up here. And we're gonna wrap that around, just really basic joint like that. Okay, so blue, blue is the tweeter. Let's just quickly turn this amplifier down a bit. Blue is the tweeter here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wire the tweeter up nicely like this. I'm actually just gonna hook this up and then we'll turn it up. All right, so I've now got the Philips speaker hooked up. Let's hear how this thing sounds. Okay, so that little blue woofer, although it is trying its hardest, just isn't outputting a lot of bass. I could hear it is actually sort of bottoming out there and I'm at volume 14 out of 40 on a little kicker iPod dock amplifier. But as we can hear there, the speaker didn't sound terrible. So the Philips speaker works as well as the little Doze. I'm just gonna call them Doze for the rest of this video, even though that's probably not how it's written. Uh, that's just how I'm gonna call it because they are Bose replicas. So now what I'm gonna do is grab my speaker wire again. I've got the US audio center channel now, and we're gonna plug this into the back. It's just got nice little push terminals here, which I generally uh, would associate with cheaper speakers. Um, but here we go. I actually think the tweet is blown. Judging by the sound of that, I actually think the tweeter isn't working. Let's just quickly pull the grill off these speakers just here, or this speaker just here. And uh, as we can see, the woofers are there. Let's just quickly confirm. Yep, I was completely right. The tweeter in these speakers is blown, which is actually support, sort of weird. I think that happened in one of my last videos as well. I think what happens is people hook these up to home theater amplifiers, they then crank them up, but the home theater amplifier puts a low cut on the woofers, so the woofers hold up, but the tweeters go. I've done this before uh, with my Sound Tower speakers ages back. I did that and blew a tweeter. And uh, well, lucky last of the big, big Pioneer speakers. So let's quickly grab the wire. Someone's done a, a rather confident job of stripping these. You can see how much of that extra wire there. There's at least an inch of wire on this side and maybe an inch and a half on this side here. Uh, let's hook this up to my little amp down here and uh, just quickly wrap the wires around. It's not the way you should do it, but when you're trying to do it really quick, it doesn't really matter. And we have nothing, but the volume's turned down. Let's hear, let's go back in the song. Not gonna lie, the Pioneer speakers are not too bad. They actually sound pretty impressive. So what I'm gonna do now is gonna go grab a drill and then we're gonna start having a look inside of these speakers. Now I believe these little cheapy Philips ones with the blue drivers aren't gonna be able to come apart judging by the look of it without completely destroying them. Completely fine, they didn't sound great. I just want the blue drivers. The little DOS ones or DOS, they look like they've got screws there, so I should just be able to pull the front of the speaker off. Uh, that center channel and the Philips ones just have Philips head screwdrivers around, so I should just be able to remove them with ease. So what I'm gonna do right now is go and grab a drill and I will be back. All right, so if you know my situation at the moment, you'll know that I'm renting and I currently don't know where the drill bit is, 
which means I'm gonna have to opt for a screwdriver for this. Yes, I know, a screwdriver to remove all of these little speaker screws on video. It's going to be terrible, I apologize. But what I'm gonna quickly do now is see if I can pull out one of the drivers here for the Doze speaker. I keep saying that different every time. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just quickly cut forward and I'm just gonna remove all the screws for these, this speaker right here. All right, so I've now removed all of the screws. Let's see if we can pull the face off. Wow, to my surprise, there's actually no added stuff inside here. And this, the drivers actually have a relatively big magnet on the back. Well, a magnet shielding cover on the back, I should say. I'm gonna have a quick look inside the top one as well. Again, well, this one actually appears, one of the screws is still threaded in just ever so slightly. So let's have a look in here, the top one seems to be refusing to come out. Oh, no, it looks like one of the, the bottom screws has now got its threads caught as well. Here we go. Yep, no added weight in this one either, and just another relatively big magnet, which is surprising me, actually. Eight watt, uh, so eight ohms, 10 watts. So each one of these little drivers here are rated at 10 watts. If we have a look here, they don't appear to be of the highest quality little drivers here, but they actually <laughs> seem to be okay. So I'm gonna put this side now, now that I've had a look inside of the DOS speaker, I'm gonna put this back together, and then uh, what we'll do is we'll move our way over to the Philips speakers. All right, so it's just occurred to me too that the screws on the back of this speaker, the top one here would be for a wall mounting bracket, and the bottom one here actually is a negative uh, female uh, RCA plug. So that's how this speaker would have been powered. It would have just had an RCA plug into the back of it and that would have been the wall mount. So there we are, the DOS speakers surprisingly not as bad as I thought they'd be. But now what we're gonna do is move our way over to these cheap little Philips speakers right here. So what we're gonna do is move this out of my way and let's have a look inside. Now I'm just gonna assume for this, just like all other cheap speakers like this, I should just be able to get a screwdriver, wedge it between the cheap chipboard here and the plastic. So let's grab a small-ish flathead screwdriver and a slightly smaller one. We're gonna wedge this in the gap, maybe slightly smaller to start off with. But once we get that in there, we should be able to start levering it off. So I'm gonna quickly do this and then I'll be back once I've snapped the plastic off. All right, so I've now just levered it in a bit, and I think I should, with force, be able to rip this apart, hopefully. There we go. Now again, I'm just gonna quickly inspect, make sure there's nothing inside there that I don't want to come flying out and scare me, if you know what I mean. And uh, yeah, we have the backs of the drivers. These are branded East Tech. So these are East Tech drivers, now, I've heard of the brand before, and I can't remember if they were sort of okay or if they were really, really bad. So let me know down in the comment section below, is East Tech a good or a terrible brand? Um, the, I'm actually kind of annoyed, actually, looking at the back here. The woofer has a very, very weird mounting bracket, which kind of sucks because I wanted to use this in uh, a different sort of design, as we can see. Looking at my B camera just there, we can see that the speaker sort of folds back and up and over, uh, which is kind of annoying, really. I was just hoping it was sort of just a generic sort of mount, but of course it's not. I should be able to flatten that out, though, I imagine, uh, just by a vice or something like that. But here we are, we've now got the woofer removed. Let's have a look. And yeah, just like I expected, bright blue driver. It's pretty crazy looking. Uh, aside from the fact that it has this really weird mount, I should hopefully be able to fix it. This is definitely a crazy looking driver. <laughs> it's the exact reason I wanted it. Just look at that thing. How weird and crazy does that look? Um, that's a quick look inside of the Philips speakers. Eight ohms, 30 watts, uh, according to this little, the back of this little blue driver here. And I'm gonna say this is a four inch. So if I could straighten those out, ho hopefully I can. I might be able to use them for something else in the future, which would definitely be something pretty cool. Also just removing the tweeter now so we can just have a close look at the tweeter, but it's just gonna be a cheap little paper dome, little uh, tweeter here. We've got one little capacitor, which seems to be the crossover. Wow, that's actually got a really interesting looking design as well. 
If we have a quick close look at this, uh, I'm not sure if you can get quite close enough. Let me see if I can just pull some, pull some slack out here. We can see we've got this really weird sort of design on the dust cap just there where it sort of is at like a full on 90 degree angle up from the cone and then it comes across. Definitely again, a really weird design sort of looking speaker here. These East Tech drivers are definitely quite interesting. But there we are, that's a look inside of the Philips speaker. Now what we're gonna do is quickly remove the woofers and tweeter from the US audio one and see if we can diagnose why the tweeter isn't working or if it is just blown, unfortunately. All right, so here we are now with the US audio woofer with its screws removed. We'll put a flathead screwdriver under here and we'll start to lever it out. Wow, look at that. Very, very big uh, <laughs> magnets around there. I'm sure this is a very solid woofer. We've even got a vented pole piece on the back there, which is rather nice. We have a proper crossover inside of there. You can see here we have a resistor going to the woofer here. So I'm not too sure what that's doing. That almost looks like it's aftermarket to be quite frank with you. Uh, I'm not sure if my camera is getting close enough there, but we've sort of got like a, a spade that connects into this and then another spade with a gold plug on the end. So I'd say the owner of this speaker before me possibly has had a look inside of this thing before. What I'm gonna do now is just really quickly remove the other woofer and the tweeter and we'll have a quick look from this side to see if we can see anything that is really, really obviously modified. Um, but it looks like someone at some stage in the ownership of this speaker has added a resistor to the right woofer. So maybe just maybe the right, uh, the tweeter isn't blown and someone's wiring job just hasn't been up to scratch. So I'm just gonna quickly remove the tweeter now and uh, I'll get back to you after I've done that. All right, so I've now got all the screws for the tweeter undone and let's just pull the other woofer out, get that flathead screwdriver under here and I'll just move this camera down a bit like that and zoom it out so we just get a little bit wider of a view. And again, on this side, we also have what looks to be that additional resistor there uh, because I can kind of tell because the additional spade right here is gold plated and it has a male spade plug that connects into the female here. It's quite weird actually. I, I don't think that would be something that would come from factory like that because I'm sure the resistor would just be at the other end of the wire. Now removing the tweeter as well, it's sort of stuck in with some sort of glue, uh, but there appears to be no added components to the tweeter here. I'd say, unfortunately, it is just blown. Uh, besides that though, I can see there is some acoustic foam on the inside here, some sort of padding. It's funny actually, it looks like the holes that were cut out of where the drivers were are actually inside of the enclosure here. As funny as it sounds, uh, that's how it appears to be. There's like these weird circles on the top and bottom of the cabinet. Maybe that's to add weight, I'm not too sure. But there is definitely a proper crossover here uh, for the woofer outputs, the tweeter output, and the inputs. So, interesting design here. It's a bit unfortunate the tweeter doesn't work because I reckon this might have actually been a solid speaker. But now that we've had a look inside of the US audio speaker, let's move our attention over to the big Pioneer ones to finish off this video. All right, so up lucky last is this Pioneer speaker and I believe it is actually, yep, still hooked up to the amplifier. So maybe, just maybe, just maybe we'll get some free air excursion here. So it looks like we've got eight screws here which are holding down what I'm hoping is a plate in front of the woofer. Uh, which should then reveal a circle woofer because I don't like square drivers at all. I wish every driver just had a nice circle around it and that they'd all mount that way. So let's remove these screws here. They are rather big heavy duty screws. So I'm hoping again, this is just a protecting sort of look fancy type thing that's in front of the driver. So I'm gonna remove these screws and then I'll get back to you after I've done that. All right, so I've now removed the last screw. Let's see, is this just the plate? Okay, nope, the whole woofer is going to lift up. So I'm going to take a sit, uh, seat back. I'm gonna remove all of the screws here just in case again, if anything likes to come out and I will lift the woofer up and move it over. I can see there's nothing there. And wow, we have some sort of insulation there that actually looks like home insulation. Uh, the woofer has a very, very small magnet. That's actually quite funny, have a look at that. Surprisingly, this was actually the best sounding speaker of the lot, so. Very, very poor design on the back here. I hate that. See how this is all the metal out here. It just looks cheap. I reckon if I could pull that cover off the front there, if it wasn't glued on, it would just look terrible. I don't know why companies do that. It just looks shocking. But uh, it looks to be 
like we have the input comes in and then it's wired in parallel here with the mid-range tweeter here, uh, which I will now unscrew uh, for to have a quick look at behind and I will uh, undo the tweeter at the top as well and I'll be back with you after I've done that. All right, so I've now unscrewed both of the tweeters and okay, that was just the plate. This is kind of what I was expecting for the woofer. The plate's just come off the tweeter and that cheap little mid-range tweeter there is still stuck in. However, the top little piezo here, we can see this is a piezo judging by the back look of it. That is of course a piezo driver. That has come out, that appears to just be wired in parallel, although I couldn't actually hear anything coming from it. Appears to just be wired in parallel with what is, I believe, the actual tweeter here. So let me just quickly remove this thing and uh, we'll have a quick look behind this. So it appears to all just be wired in parallel together and uh, there's just a very small capacitor on the back here. All of the speakers here are actually branded Pioneer, um, which is a good thing to see, I guess, from a manufacturer like that. This is all made in Japan, supposedly, according to the back. But anyway, there it is, a quick look inside of all of these speakers I picked up. I want you guys to let me know down in the comment section below what you wanna see me do with these speakers next, be it blow them up, make something with them, make an addition to shit speaker back here. Which driver do I add into there? Let me know all in the comment section down below. But with that being said, guys, I'll catch you guys in the next video. I hope you have enjoyed this one. If you have, chuck a like on it, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.